Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great. In this new tutorial, we'll look more in depth at how I tackle building when using an existing layout or 2D maps, and what are the challenges that come up with such projects. Most classic tabletop roleplay scenarios come with a scenario and a 2D map that we all have seen. It can be very detailed or quite bare bone, but when printed out or used on Roll20 or your usual virtual tabletop, it is often straightforward to understand a 2D map. Indeed, those types of plans are something we're accustomed to and we quickly learn to navigate them. Things can start to get a bit more messy when you look at them with a 3D mindset. Walls are merely thicker than a line on paper and well, stairs have regularly magical properties where they bring you to a different room than what you expected. And also, you do have the plans for the floor you're on or for a few levels but what's around? How's the roof constructed and the facade and the gardens and everything around? And most important of all, where are the damn toilets and bathrooms? They always are missing. Most plans forget about them completely. So today, I'll try to help you bring your 2D maps closer to real life. With a 3D build done in Telspire. And hopefully give you a new way to look at the many strange things we take for granted in the classic roleplay maps. First, we'll have a more theoretical approach and then show it with an example. Before you go from this to this 3D map, we first have to look at the scenario in its globality, as plan is in the end just the support for the action and the key elements of the story. So check the plans, read the description, make sense of the flow of the story, and if you can, try to understand what is essential and what is not. In the end, if you do not build a bedroom that is not useful for the scenario, you should not feel too bad about it. Whereas if you absolutely need something, your focus should be there. When we want to build as accurately as possible regarding the plan we have, the first thing to look is the scale. In majority of cases, the grid is a square-based one, and as Telspire is the same, finding the size of a door, pathway, or main elements will quickly help you understand the ratio you build with. Here for example, this plan has no details, only the layout and the shape of the rooms. I see that there are doors, but they could be simple or double doors. I will choose to use one little square of the map as one basic square in Telspire. Using Photoshop, I've drawn a grid on top with the rulers that visualize the 2x2 tiles, as it is an easy way to count. It is always an appreciation on your part, as you will see later in the example that you may need to expand or reduce some rooms or the overall scale to make your building work. One main issue you'll encounter when building with Telspire from 2D maps is that walls actually occupy a physical space. Incredible, I know, but I have the impression that most 2D maps kind of forget about it and they're just a straight line of two pixel wide that are not very useful when you're really building. So to make do, you have to accept that either your rooms will be smaller on some side or that you'll have some small offset. In any case, try to be regular and if you adapt the size of one room in a way, do it for all of them in the same way and the map will be virtually the same. In the end, the Telspire dungeon I've built is very close to the original plan and most important, the layout, flow and main elements are where they should be relative to each other which is the most important thing you want. It may not be perfect at first, but with some patience and work, you'll be more and more consistent in analyzing the scale of your plans and adapting them. So this is all in well if 2D plans could be used directly without any hassle. You'll soon see that many maps have multiple levels and you need to know where each is located and if everything makes sense in 3D too. For this, I try to create layers in Photoshop and align everything floor by floor. It will help you understand where that stair should be ending and how your buildings are shaped. Once you have your layers, you also need to think about the exterior of your building and perhaps the missing floors, caves or attic that would make for a full building. Here, with the description in the scenario, I know that the castle is stood upon a cliff is probably closer to a big manor and would be quite tall. So I need to build all of this too. 
Try to think about the style you want to go with. Is this a peasant house, a forest manor, or a rocky castle in the desert? Building techniques, materials, and aesthetics should be different, and an iconic style will make the place only more memorable. A good base to start is the first floor. Generally, the biggest one too. It will give the main shape and size of the full building. You will probably be able to respect the scale and size of the plan, but once you start adding rooms, they may be too big or too little to be believable spaces in Intel Spire. So better redo only one floor than the whole building because you've realized that too late. On that note, if some maps make perfect sense in 2D or 3D, they may not be very practical with a party of four figurines cramped in a 2x2 rooms in Tail Spire. Oh, sorry, the cat. I'm gonna open to the cat. Yeah, come on. <sighs> Always try to think about how the player will move around in your space. Or, if you want them to be stuck in a corridor, as either someone is too fat or because the pathway is too narrow. Depends on the point of view, I guess. In the end, you'll need to fill in the rooms and add the details. I tend to leave this to the end, as this is the part I like the most, and also because adding details when you're not sure where a window will end up or if your roof is there or not, is not a very future-proof idea. When furnishing the rooms, you simply have to follow the description of each in your scenario. Focus first on the main or most important details and then fill out the rest as you wish. With habit, you'll do it in no time and will always find new ways to mix and match props into various furniture. Just remember, try to keep a consistent style and you'll be all good. Also, don't forget to add the water closets too, like who has a three-story mansion and a nobody way to wash themselves. So, after those three long page on word, we've finished the theoretical part of building from 2D to 3D. I'll try to show you a more concrete example with me going through the building process of my latest lab in the second part of this tutorial. For this second part, I've recorded myself while building a chemical workshop that my game master had sent me plans for. So I first started by reading the details I had and prepping the map in Photoshop to understand each layer and trying to find the correct scale for everything. Once I had a good understanding of the layout of the building, I started with the main underground and also the biggest one, the boiler room. As everything will revolve around it, this will dictate the rest of the factory and if I have to make any adjustments, I better do it now. I quickly started to prototype some boilers or vats as they were quite big and needed to be taken care of before I was blocked by any walls or elements. The result is that I realized that the room would have been way too small to house the seven boilers of the plan or even to allow for clear navigation of the players. I then added a bit more details to the ground of this room and to the vats and started adding the rest of the base floor of my building, focusing on the walls, room layout and the correct height and spacing of everything. Next step was to set up the normal floor of the map as we were working previously on the underground. While adding the storage room and the stables, I realized that the 2D map had put the stables behind the storage with an access that made little common sense to me, so I changed the configuration of the room so that the horses would be first and then the storage. To me, those little believability details are what make a map work. After designing the courtyard, I studied the inside of the building and also quickly realized that something dumb was going on here. There were no stairs to go down or up, only impractical ladders quite far apart, which made no sense in a working factory and that was the case as per the scenario.
For the next floor, I first work on the crane. This big element will detect how I'll make my roof and how much space I need for that room. So it is important to do it before the rest. After that, I finish the full layout of the factory and I can now spend some time on the exterior as the shape of the whole thing will not change anymore. I want to give it a factory vibe, something a bit run down but still in activity. Windows, roofs, chimneys, details, a lot of the time is spent on something that is described in two lines in the scenario and never shown again on the 2D maps. And finally, I can fill all the rooms with plenty of details, starting from the scenario description and then adding non-essential details and what I like to do. With all those steps and around 5 hours of work, from the planning phase to the end of the construction, we now have finished to build the Alchemy Workshop in 3D from a 2D map. In the end, remember that while fidelity of your reconstruction is important and valued, making something playable and something that you can build with your skills and what is available in the Tellspire toolset is the most important. Know your limitations and try to work to overcome them. I hope this new tutorial was interesting for you. Please tell me in the comments if you liked it and if you have any remaining questions. This will greatly help me. I'll see you on the next one and have a great day.